This tutorial will show you how to create a price set for an event in CVCRM. These events or these instructions are not specific to any particular organization. If your site is in Drupal 7 and you have CVCRM, the steps will be the same. For questions, please submit a support conversation at support.1h.com or if you're in Basecamp working on a new site, please post a new Basecamp message for your project management team. And don't forget to watch any other helpful tutorials out here on our support site. To get started, of course, you will want to make sure you are in CVCRM. Uh, we have already created an event and we want to make sure that we are adding a price set to this event. Now, uh, really quickly, a price set is a kind of like a little um, group of fields that usually denote a price or something. Price sets can be used for events. They can also be used for contribution pages too. The steps to create a price set are the same if you're creating them for events or contribution pages. Um, so be aware. A price set will give you the ability to give somebody options when it comes to um, paying for an event or selecting options for admission. Um, maybe you have an event that has multiple admission types, um, you know, sponsorship levels, and maybe you only have a certain number of sponsorships that you can sell at each level. A price set would give you the ability to limit the number of people that can buy each one of those options. So, um, you know, if you only have you know, five of this ticket at this price, you know, then after five people have purchased that ticket level or the, that level, I should say, uh, it'll close off that option, but it'll still leave the other options open. So price sets can give you a lot of um, kind of wiggle room when it comes to events. Now, if you do not want somebody to be able to select multiple options or um, purchase multiple tickets, you do not need to use a price set. You can use fixed contribution or fixed event uh, labels. So you can say, okay, you know, if you only want one person to be able to buy one admission, then you can use fixed labels that are within the events themselves and just say, okay, you know, this is the only option where, you know, they could choose between three options, but they can only pick one of those three options and that's it. So um, there are already options on the event, but they are very limited. So that's why we are creating a price set for the event. Now to give you a little background, the event that we've created is a concert series. So we want somebody to be able to, be able to buy admission to this concert. So uh, if I go to events, when I'm in CV Serum, of course, if I go to events, you should see an option at the very bottom for new price set and manage price sets. We are going to click on new price set and we're going to create a new set of fields. Now it's going to ask you to create a new price set. And I like to think of a price set um, as kind of like a cluster. So this price set kind of like a grape, like a cluster of grapes, um, where each one of the fields is like an individual grape within that cluster, but the set itself is kind of like the vine that holds all of those fields together or those grapes together. So we are going to call this, let's call this concert series. We are going to use this for an event. You do have the ability to use price sets for both events and contribution pages as you're creating them, but this one is going to be for an event. Uh, the default financial type never appears out on the page itself. Um, this is just going to say anybody that fills this out, uh, or chooses one of these options um, will automatically be listed as an event fee. So you can kind of make sure that that financial type is pulled in there for reporting purposes. Again, it never appears out on the page. Once you've put that in, you don't have to worry about preform or post form help. We're just gonna go ahead and save. Once we've saved, now we wanna add some fields to this price set. So the first one might be, let's say, you know, single admission. So, I say, okay, I want to offer a single admission. A single admission would be, um, you know, maybe $10. If somebody wants to buy, a, you know, two tickets, then it could be $20. They could get, you know, a little bit of a savings if they buy more tickets. So, you know, it can be very specific if you want. Um, so in this case, we'll say a single admission and the info, 
Input field type, this is the type of options that they have when they come in to fill this out. If it is listed as text numeric quantity, then it gives somebody the ability to enter in a number. So they could say, I want to buy three single admission tickets. Um, and then, you know, it would count up three of those options. If you do a select, that means it's going to be a drop down of options. So maybe within single admission, you have different levels of admission. So you can give somebody a kind of a drop down of those options. Radio buttons would give the ability to, again, have multiple choices. So if there's different levels of admission, they could pick one of those options. Radio buttons, you can only pick one of those options. You cannot pick multiples of those options. Same thing with a select or a drop down field. Only allows you to select one of the options. Check boxes, again, gives you multiple choice options. Check boxes give you the ability to check multiple boxes. So they could say, I want to buy this option and that option. Um, you know, so again, you have options when it comes to what kind of field you're setting up. Um, I want somebody to say, hey, I'm going to purchase three single admission tickets or five single admission tickets or anything else. So um, we are going to leave that as a text numeric quantity. Under price, we'll say each one of these tickets is $10. A participant count, if we want to count every single one of these. So if you buy, you know, three tickets, that should be three people. So I want for every one of these purchased to count as a person. Now, if you are doing tables, you could say, okay, when somebody buys a table, a table is 10 people. So maybe your participant count for a full table is 10 people. So again, you can always kind of make sure that you're capturing a participant count for each one of these. Is there a maximum number of people that can purchase this option? No. But you know, maybe if there was, we can add that in there. So if this was a level, uh, a level of sponsorship, and we only had three, you know, open uh, spots for that level of sponsorship, you could put three in there. And then once you hit the third, registration for that option, it'll turn itself off and you can't register anybody else using this specific price option. So again, you can kind of always pick and choose. Um, I am just going to leave it as single admission, $10. We're going to count every participant that comes in here, not going to put in a maximum number of participants. That default financial type still is going to be event fee. Do I want to display an amount? Yes. You will always see this little checkbox li listed. You can take off that dollar amount. So if you don't want it to say single admission, $10, you can do that. There are ways to use price sets in a way that is not actually associated with a dollar amount. Um, and so, uh, and that's for another day, <laughs> but you do have the ability if, if instead you're, you know, putting the dollar amount within your field label, and you don't want that price set to, or the price to show separately, you can always kind of uncheck that option and choose how you want that to display. If you need to put in any help uh, or help text, you can put that here in the field help. You can also make these fields um, active and expire on specific times. So if you have early bird admission where somebody purchases tickets before a certain date or after a certain date, maybe it's cheaper or more expensive, you can always use this option to say, okay, if they buy tickets until the 31st, you know, then they're $10. If, you know, after, you know, a September 1st or whatever, then the tickets jump up to 15 bucks instead of 10 bucks. You can do that and the system will actually take this $10 field down and put up the $15 field, but you do have to create that $15 field too. So again, you kind of have to create two fields, but the system will automatically take them off. Now, you can make these fields required. Um, I would double check as you go through anything um, whether or not you want these fields to be required, depending upon your event, how you want to capture information, what options you want to give people. You might determine that some of these fields need to be required for them to be able to process anything or go on to the next page, um, or some of them may not need to be required. So again, as you come through, just be aware that they might be a little different. Okay, so we have single admission. Now I'm going to hit save and new down here, and we're going to create another option. So we can say, let's go with sponsorship um, admission. Okay, so we can say, okay, well, 
maybe we want somebody to be able to do a sponsorship admission. Now, I'm doing this so that we can use one of these fields down here. So let's, we can make this, again, a select field, which is a drop-down field, a radio button field, which would, uh, you know, put those radio buttons out there. Again, they're only able to choose one of those options. Um, if I want, and of course, I could make it a checkbox if they needed to choose one or more of those options, they can. Um, but if I wanted to just say, okay, sponsorship admission, so maybe this is gold, ooh, gold level. And the gold level amount is going to be, you know, let's say a hundred dollar ticket. I know that's a, that's a nice ticket. And um, that default event type or financial type is going to be event. I want to say, okay, we're capturing one participant per each one of these uh, options chosen. Or maybe you can say, okay, with the gold level, when they buy, when they purchase, when they spend a hundred dollars, maybe that gets them five tickets. Or maybe it gets them, you know, 10 tickets with that. Um, and then some other cool things like, um, you know, uh, complimentary champagne or a closer seat or something like that. Then you can always make sure if there's like a group of tickets purchased with each one of those, you're doing that. And then you can always say, okay, how many of these can I sell? Let's say we can sell 10 of these. So there's 10 of these tickets that are available. Each one of those tickets is basically worth 10 participants because you're buying a group of tickets um you know and maybe it's not 10 maybe it's only you know eight tickets or five tickets or something else like that you can kind of pick and choose so we can come on down and say maybe the silver level is 75 dollars that gets you five tickets and maybe there is 20 of those available options. And then we can come on down and say bronze level $50. That gets you two tickets. And there are maybe 35 tickets that are available. Now I can keep saying another choice, another choice, another choice, and put in other options down here if I want. Um, I can also make one of these a default. I do not suggest that. Most people hate having the defaults picked for them, but that is something that you can do if you really want to. I highly suggest that you make sure that these are listed as one option per line. That means that it will stack each one of these nicely in the, on the page, one on top of the other, um, instead of just listing them out in one horizontal line, which will look weird. So again, one option per line. Do you want to display the amount? Yes, we're doing that. And then in the field help, you can say, you know, um, this is where you could say, okay, um, you know, gold level sponsorship includes, you know, 10 or we said eight, Ooh, eight, um, you know, single admission tickets. Um, seats in the orchestra pit complimentary champagne you know anything you want and then you can come down and say you know silver level sponsorship and then you know Add in more additional. So you can come in here and make sure that things are listed so that way people can see anything. And again, you can choose if this needs to be an early bird. You know, maybe they only have the ability to buy sponsorship levels between specific dates. And then, you know, after a specific date, they don't have the ability to do that. The field will turn itself off after that date. So again, you can kind of pick and choose. You might not want to make these, you know, required. That's okay. And then you can go ahead and save a new. Maybe you want somebody to be able to buy, you know, raffle tickets to win tickets for, you know, um, next uh, the next concert series or something. And then you could come in here and say raffle tickets. Okay, we well, want somebody to buy a specific number of raffle tickets. You want them to be able to buy different types of raffle tickets. This might just be like a number field. We want somebody to buy a raffle ticket. Each raffle ticket is five bucks. 
we can put in a participant count. You don't have to. These are just raffle tickets. I don't need to associate that with a participant. But maybe we only have, you know, 600 tickets that we can sell total. Then I can do that. And I can keep, you know, that display. I can display an amount. Or maybe I want to say, you know, raffle tickets are, you know, $5 a piece. Ooh. With proceeds. Ooh. or a music fund or whatever. So you can always say, okay, well, we're already saying they're $5. Maybe you don't need to display the amount. So you can kind of pick and choose how you want that to appear. Uh, you know, add in any help, of course. Choose if it's active on, you know, is it required, anything else. So now we've created a couple of those fields. We want to take a look at what these fields look like. So we have a single admission, sponsorship admission, and then we're giving somebody the ability to do raffle tickets. If I preview all of these fields, we should see now we have single admission. I could say I want to buy three single admission tickets. Sponsorship admission, you know, maybe I want to buy one of these options. Maybe I don't want to buy one of these options. Again, you'll see that it says, hey, this is your options down here if you buy a gold level, silver, bronze, whatever. And then I could say, okay, well, let's buy six of these raffle tickets. So now it's going to do, you know, $3, and this is where the dollar amount will display. So if you don't want to display the dollar amount, you don't have to. Um, but I can say I'm buying three single admission tickets, so that's $30. And then obviously six tickets at five bucks is another $30 for a total of 60 bucks. If we like the way this looks, then we can go ahead and use this profile now on an, an event. So if I go to events, manage events, and don't forget, you can always go back and edit anything in your profile field. Uh, so I went to manage events, and then um, we are gonna go ahead and edit this concert series. So if I come into configure, and I'm gonna go straight to fees. Now you can kind of uh, change these steps a little bit, but I like to create my price set first. So I'm gonna come in here, is this fee a paid event? Yes. We want to make sure that we have a payment processor in place. So we're using a trust processor. You can always use a pay later option if you want to. We can make sure if there's a fee label, we can say, you know, event, admission, anything that comes through this page should be in an event fee. This uh, financial type only appears like in the back end of the site. It's only used for reporting purposes. You never have to worry about that. Down here, you'll see the option for regular fees. This is where I was saying, if you only want somebody to buy one or have just a single option, you could say, okay, I wanna do a single admission. Um, you know, a single admission's $10. They would only be able to buy one ticket. They would never be able to buy three tickets or four tickets. It would just be one admission. Um, and they'd only be able to choose one of the options. They wouldn't be able to buy raffle tickets this way or anything else. So um, if you have a very specific, where it's like you just want to do a one for one, you can use these regular fees or these fixed um, kind of event fee labels right here. Or you'll notice that there's a little area for price set, and this is where I can choose one of these. Now we just made concert series, and you'll notice that now those fixed price or fixed uh, labels now disappear, and we're just using price set. If I go ahead and I save. Now we will want to check what the event looks like. So if I go to event links and we go to event info, from here I should be able to see some information. So out here on this info page, you should be able to see basic info of like when, where the event is. It's also now gonna tell you how much this event is. Now, so it should list out all of the admission types that we have you know, added in here. If these do not, e if they don't equal up, they don't look good, please have our team go in and style this area. Do not let this sit unaligned and looking terrible. If I go into register now, it should give me the ability to enter in some information for registration. So I'm still capturing you know, name and address information, but now I can also choose an option. So do I want 
three of these tickets? You know, do I want a, a sponsorship level? If the labels don't look even out here, you know, again, have our team fix any, you know, issues with the labels or the way things are aligning, um, even within these areas. Like this gold level should be all one line and it's not. Uh, these are things we want you to take a look at and have our team help you style. They should only be styled once or twice maybe. Um, and then that should do it for the rest of the pages. But again, if you see something look weird, please let us know. So this is again where I can choose multiple options. I can buy tickets down here and it's going to total everything up for me. Now, um, this is again where it gets um, you know, a little bit uh, contingent on also your profile information. When you come in and you think about your event, do you want to be able to register multiple people? Do you want to just do one person? Um, you know, if it's just one person, maybe you don't want them to buy multiple admissions. Maybe you only want them to buy one admission. You know, do you want somebody to be able to buy, you know, this or that? So again, as you go through, um, you know, how you set up the event how you want to capture information um, or the options you want to give your event participants could potentially change the way your price set is, uh, you know, formatted or the options that you're giving them, whether it be a field where you can put in a number or whether it be a multiple choice option where they can kind of pick one option or the other, or maybe even a checkbox where they can pick multiple options within that price set. If you have any questions about setting up your price set, or if you have set up a price set and you want to make sure that everything looks good, please go ahead and submit a support conversation at support.1h.com. Our team is available 24-7 to help out.